Hey guys, what's happening? So, in my previous video I showed you this RC card, and I'm kind of like blinging the thing out. So I got this exhaust pipe on Amazon, it's like $14, and it's looks like it's like polished aluminum, but I don't really like polished aluminum so much. It's, it's hard to keep up, keep it clean and, and maintained. So, if you've watched any of my previous videos, you know that I have a home powder coat, like Harbor Freight Powder Coater. So what I wanted to do was sandblast this and powder coat it black wrinkle. And at the same time, I wanted to take this engine apart. Sort of like what they do on those higher end engines. Like this is a cheapo like Taiwanese brand. Um, I wanted to take this whole engine apart and powder coat the block too. So keep the head aluminum, but I wanted to powder coat the block. Um, to kind of protect it from uh, corrosion. Uh, you know, I live down here at the beach and, and well, the bare aluminum corrodes really fast. So, um, yeah, I did, when I when I first bought this, I didn't really, I couldn't tell in the pictures. I, I didn't know if this would fit this 90 degree angle thing here. Not 90 degree angle, but the uh, header header pipe. And so I bought an extra one from Red Cat, not knowing that this would fit. And then I realized that looking at it closer, that the Red Cat one is actually better. And I'll show you why here in a second. Alright, so I thought I'd show you the difference in the pipes, and what I noticed is that, I hope you can see that, but there's actually like a very sharp edge in there. You can see it in the light. And the problem with that is any sort of sharp edges on an intake system or exhaust system will create like a whistle. And I've actually had to solve that problem numerous times in different cars on the uh, throttle body. Aftermarket high performance throttle bodies. Um, Alright, so, and I don't have that in the Red Cat one. It definitely seems a lot more polished in here. There's no sharp edges. So I'm obviously going to be using the Red Cat one. Or even though I could take my little Dremel tool and probably smooth it out, but I mean, that's going to create like a random restriction. Like it comes out, and I don't know if it's just the way they welded it, but. Alright, engine's out. Let's take off the exhaust manifold here. Six millimeter to get that crab off. Fly a little bit, so I put it in my vise. Oh, get it tighter. Hopefully, the wood will. There we go. I get this back plate off here. Yeah, the last time I've taken a nitro engine apart, probably like 30 years ago, when I used to fly airplanes. Yeah, before I was, uh, before I got my first car, my 1966 Mustang, I was uh, totally into. RC boats, cars, planes, pretty much everything RC. And then as I got my first car, all my money went to that. Restoring my old Mustang. Alright. This back plate off. I keep it as centered the way it was. Okay. I'll take the head off too, but it's pretty basic.
different now. Alright, that's the head. The glow plug. Let's see if I can get the sleeve out. Hopefully the sleeve will come out. Cool, well, there's like a little there's a little uh, pin in there to mark it. Oh, my hair picks. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I don't know if that's normal. Like I said, it's been so many years since I worked on one of these engines. I think I was probably about... I was in the RC when I was between 8 years old and, and 15 years old. That crane cap just comes out like that. Now you get these bearings out. There we go. That's it. It. I gotta take this over to my uh, sandblast machine, and I, I need to actually clean up the metal before I wrap a powder coat on it. Even though I actually could powder coat on this right here, but it doesn't stick very good. Um, so I'm gonna sandblast this thing. That's what the, the tape is for. Just all I'm trying to do is really just keep the stuff from going internally. I don't want to scratch the uh, machine surfaces, so I have a sandblaster over there. So I throw it in there. Sandblast these things and uh, let it dry. I'm gonna have an ultrasonic clean after I sandblast it. Yeah, I forgot to mention I actually have some uh, Phillips screws in here. These are, these are sacrificial uh, screws. That way I keep the threads clean. Those are the most important threads. They had bolts. All right, there they are out of the uh, sandblaster. So I gotta take this stuff off. So I need to get this thing a soap bath in my ultrasonic cleaner. A little Dawn in there. Hot water. So what I need to do is get any sort of like uh, oils off there. Vigils. Soak. Also did the flywheel. Put that on. All right, so they're done cleaning. Now I'm just going to take them out and send them to the sun for about an hour. The main thing is you don't want any sort of residual moisture on there because the moisture on the surface will will, will uh, evaporate and it'll put like a hole in your powder coat. Yeah, to dry these, you either got to put them in the oven. Uh, the, the worst thing you can do is use an air compressor because the air compressor is going to put oil back on it. All right, so this is special powder coating tape. And I'm going to take pieces off here and. I'm going to cover the areas where I don't want powder coat to go. Alright, so I think you get the idea there. Alright, so that's my Harbor Freight powder coater. And I actually made another video on how to work that thing. But, uh, alright, so that's the only intricate part that I have to do. And the other ones I'm just going to throw up there and powder coat. It's not 100%, but it's hard to get in every little nook and crevice. Alright, take a look. Yeah, there's nothing like powder coating. I mean, look at the finish on that thing. Yeah, it's called Black Wrinkle. Taking this stuff off. Yeah, there's gonna be a few areas where I'm probably have to clean it up. That doesn't really matter on the exhaust. There's gonna be a gasket there. You can get that bearing on video. I, I just basically put the crankshaft in here like that. Went all the way down, seat the bearing, then I put a Phillips like that. And I put around the punch down into this and I used a small hammer and gently tapped it in place. Alright, so I'm going to actually change the uh, Phillips to Allen. Yes, I can't send Phillips. Alright, so I'm going to torque the head down now. And there's actually really no torque specs on the internet. 
So pretty much everybody just says do a crisscross pattern back and forth, slowly tighten her down. All right, there it is. So now I got to put the crank on there, and I got to figure out where I'm gonna put that on. All right, guys, there it is. All right, that's how you powder coat an RC engine. Good compression still. Yeah, it would have been nice if I could have, uh, you know, taken a layer off the, the logo, but it was uh, just too, uh, not, it was too recessed. Alright, cool.